Hi everyone, it's Lindy. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My channel is all about making money and saving money. So if either one of those two things interests you, please do consider subscribing. And while you're down there, please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up because I'm about ready to help you save even more money every single month. Actually, I shouldn't say every single month, I should say every single week because that's part of the system. And I'm also going to give you a bonus tip on saving money that'll help you save even more than you plan to every single week. But before I get into my tip, I wanted to share parts of an article from Market Watch with you. Despite an improving economy, Americans still have trouble saving. A shocking number of adults have less than $1,000 in a savings account. Even when their incomes are more than $150,000. Which begs the question, if you're making that much money, why are you having trouble saving it? Of those whose incomes were less than $25,000, 38% had zero saved, nothing saved. And 35% of those people had less than $1,000 in savings. People who earned more fared better, but still reported low amounts of savings and savings accounts. Of those with incomes of $100,000 to $149,999, 18% had zero saved. 26% of those people had less than $1,000 saved. And for people that made more than $150,000 annually, those numbers dropped slightly to 6% and 23% respectively. This shows that Americans are among the worst savers in the developed world. Almost half of American adults could not cover an emergency expense of $400 without selling something or borrowing money. Now that's according to the Federal Reserve. So I'll go ahead and link the full article in the video description below. But for now, I want to get on to how in the heck we can start saving more money. While those statistics are staggering, you have to ask yourself, where do you fall in that mix? Are you one of those people that if you had a real emergency, say a $400 emergency, would you be able to easily reach into a bank account and pull that money out to pay for it? Or would you have to resort to borrowing it from somebody or selling something to pay for it? The fact that that percentage was so high is gut-wrenching. And what's even more upsetting to me is that there was a time I was in that percentage. I have a little bit of a story for you and then I promise I'll get to the tip. I, pr <laughs> I promise I'm not just stringing you guys along. I just really do believe that you should know where I'm coming from with my methods for saving money and why I do feel it's so vitally important. I remember a particular situation that happened with me about 10 years ago. Uh, it was a time where money was super tight, of course, and I had a toddler at home. He, it was my firstborn. He was a toddler at the time. And I remember going to unlock my car door with the car key and I inserted the key into the car door and I turned it to unlock the car and the key snapped off. Snapped off. This car, I had one key. One key for this car. And it was my only car. It was the only car that I had to get to work. So that car was my lifeblood. Without being able to drive that car, I couldn't get to work. And unfortunately, I was living in another state from all of my family and friends at the time. And so I was literally on my own. Luckily, the key broke off in such a way I was able to easily pull it out of the lock. So I didn't have to 
try to pay someone to remove the broken key from the lock. It just came straight out. But the cost of a new key for my car was $59. $59. That's it. 59 bucks. That's like a few days worth of groceries for most people. But for me, it was about $54 too much because I had only a few dollars in my bank account and I was living paycheck to paycheck. Actually, I was living paycheck to about a week before the next paycheck. Let's keep it accurate here. And it was a special, it wasn't like a clicker key, but it was a special key that had some sort of something in the something. I don't, I don't know exactly, but it was a key that I had to go get directly from the manufacturer and they were going to charge me $59 for it. And I didn't have $59. And honestly, I didn't even really have anything that I could sell to get the money fast enough. So I ended up having to borrow 50 whatever dollars. I think I went ahead and borrowed 60 just so that I wasn't draining my bank account of the last few bucks that I had. But do you know how humiliating it is to have to borrow 50 bucks from somebody, especially your parents? Well, if you have no experience with that, let me tell you, it's humiliating. God, it makes me wanna cry. $59 key, I couldn't pay for it. That was one of the defining moments of my life where I started to tell myself, I will never, ever be this broke again, ever. And one of the ways I started to move towards that goal, aside from setting financial goals for myself to make more money, when you make more money, you have to focus on saving more money. Because as that article that we read over showed, even people that make $150,000 a year have less than $1,000 in the savings account. Some of them even had nothing. So more money is not always the cure for having no money. Making money can sometimes make things harder because you think you have it to spend. So the trick here is how in the heck do we save more money every month or every week? I found a way to do it and I'm gonna share it with you. So when I first started trying to contribute money to my savings account, I was finding it really hard to manually go in and move the money from my main account into a different account. It seemed like I would always forget to do it and then I would skip a week and then the money I thought I was gonna save would end up getting spent because let's face it, when the money is sitting in the account, you're probably gonna spend it. So the act of manually having to transfer funds out of, the, out of the account was the one common problem I was having. And I did it that way for a really long time. I just kept telling myself, no, I'll set an alarm or I'll do it every Friday night before I go to bed. And I kept trying to make all of these rhythms and systems of going in and manually moving money into a savings account. But I was still finding I was only doing it maybe half of the time. And the other half of the time I was overspending because the money was so easily accessible. But now I found the solution to this problem and saving is oh so simple. I like to call this technique mindless saving. So the concept of mindless saving is really very simple. And with the advancements in online banking, this technique has become significantly easier. Mindless saving is simply the task of setting up automatic transfers every single week. So every single week in our main bank account, we have three separate transfers that are all completely automatic. They all happen on different days actually, but that is just by my choice. It just has to do with how I move money into that account from my home business. And then when my husband's paychecks come in, um, I actually have three separate transfers throughout the week for three separate savings accounts. The first savings account that has money transferred into it weekly is our home property insurance savings account. So twice a year we make a property tax payment for our 
home. So every single week I transfer a certain amount of money into that account so that when those semi-annual property taxes are due, all I have to do is just write a check from that account and the money is there. We don't get hit with this big property tax bill and then we start wondering where thousands of dollars are going to come from. We just simply write a check from that account because the money is already sitting there and we don't have to think about it. The second transfer goes into a savings account for my self-employment tax. Because I am self-employed, I am responsible for paying all of my own income tax and rather than pay huge bills quarterly, I choose to just transfer a little bit of money every single week into that account so that when that big tax bill comes, I don't have to worry about it. I have the money sitting in the account. I didn't even have to think about what I was doing. It was just done. And that takes a big burden of a big bill off of our shoulders. And then the third transfer goes into a savings account that is our family emergency savings. Now, when I say emergency savings, I mean that is where we don't touch that money unless there is a severe emergency, like my husband loses his job and our lights are about to get shut off, or I have a really bad month and we don't have enough money to cover all of our bills plus the medical expenses that we've accumulated. That is the money that we don't touch unless something bad will happen to our family as a result. That way, that money just keeps growing and growing and if we do have a vital emergency, that money is there for us when we need it. Don't forget, I have a bonus tip when I get done, so don't go anywhere. We aren't finished yet. But what I love the most about this system is that it's automatic. It's done. Don't have to think about it. We don't accidentally spend the money before it's saved. If you're anything like me, if I see that we still have money left in the account, we're gonna be more likely to spend it. It's only when the account starts to get lower and lower do we really start to make sure that we are following a budget because we do a monthly budget every single month but even when we think we're sticking to our budget as good as we could be, if you look at the account and you see a whole bunch of money sitting there, maybe you think, oh, we're doing really good on the budget this month. We could spend an extra night at the movies. Or, oh, we have some extra money sitting in the account. We could go out to dinner tonight. Or, oh, we've got that extra money sitting there, so I'm going to buy myself, I don't know, something fancy. I don't usually splurge on things. What's something fancy? I'm gonna splurge and buy a bidet. I've been waiting for you. In all seriousness, if the money has left the account and you don't see it when you log in, you are less likely to go spend happy because you feel like your account is getting too low and you don't have the money to spend. That's part of the trick. I also recommend that these savings accounts are not so easily linked to your main account because if you can log into your main account and be able to see the savings accounts very easily, you're more likely to like transfer money back and forth and that kind of defeats the purpose. The savings accounts that hold our property tax money and the self-employment tax, those are connected to our main account because we just subconsciously know that we cannot spend that money because we have to pay taxes with it but our emergency savings is with a completely different bank. So when we log into our checking account, we don't even see our emergency savings, which actually helps a lot because when we do take that extra step to go log into our savings account on a completely different banking page, we're usually pretty pleasantly surprised that there's more money in there than we thought we had, which makes you feel even better about mindlessly saving. I will even sometimes steadily increase that savings amount just to try to save a little bit faster. So in one savings account, let's say, you know, the emergency savings account, instead of saving $100 a week, maybe I'll bump it up to $105 a week or $110 a week. Because you get used to having that money automatically transfer out of the account, you might not feel the pinch of an extra $5 a week, but it will help your savings grow faster. All right, are you ready for the bonus tip? The bonus tip 
is that you can save even more money every week by manually going into your bank account and transferring out the dollars and change weekly or even daily. Now, unfortunately, there's no way to itemize this. You have to kind of keep it in the back of your brain so that you think to do it weekly or daily, whichever you prefer. But if you get really excited about how your savings account is growing, then you might think of it as a daily task that you do before you go to bed every single night. So what does that mean exactly? transferring the dollars and cents. What does that mean? That means, for example, if you have $43.44, that you would simply transfer $3.40 out of your account into a savings account. Or if your bank account had $368.23, you would transfer out the $3.23 to make it an even $365 in your account. The whole purpose is to make your bank account a rounded number at the end of the day. You want it to be in increments of five or increments of 10. So you always want it to be $365, $350, $325. You want to basically transfer out the dollars and cents that you need the difference of to make the rounded number. Now, when I do this, those savings go into a fourth savings account. We really like different accounts in our house, can you tell? This savings account, this savings account is what I call our slush savings account. I call it that because I allow money to move freely from the checking account to that savings account and then back again as needed. So this savings account isn't necessarily for emergencies. It's more to cover things like maybe an unexpected bill or an unplanned for, unforeseen expense, like maybe you last minute got invited to a baby shower and you didn't budget for it, so you need to pull the money from somewhere, but you don't wanna to touch emergency savings or eat into your grocery budget to do that. The slush savings account is just a way to give you some extra breathing room. So if you're working on, say, a zero-based budgeting system, you have extra money within reach in case you're a little tight one month. And this slush savings account is also extra insurance that you'll keep your little paws off of your emergency savings. Now, we use this same practice with actual real change, too. You see, my husband is a little bit of a coin hoarder, and if we use cash, then we never spend the change. We only spend whole dollars. So all of the change at the end of the day, the end of the week, whatever, gets added into these little jars. Now these I really do like because there is a little coin counter on top, and I'm not gonna turn it on because I always, my husband is so much better with these than I am because he's the coin hoarder, not me. What's really nice about these is as you put the coins in the slot, it registers the size of the coin and so it actually counts as you're putting change in here so you know how much money you have sitting here. How awesome is that? So if you have a goal, maybe you're saving to go on a vacation or maybe you wanna to go to Vegas and you wanna play some slots or something like that, but you want to save a very specific amount of money for a trip, then this can be your little goal. You could say, when I hit $500 with a change, if $500 with a change will fit in here, I have no idea, then you know because it counts it for you. We have like five of these, because again I say, my husband is a coin hoarder. And they're really inexpensive too. I think this one was like 12 or $13. I'll put the Amazon link in the video description if you wanna get one for yourself because we can't get enough of them. We love them. Anyways, do you guys have any tips for saving money? I am always looking for ways of building up our savings account. I'm always finding different ways to just move a little bit more money into the savings account because I absolutely positively never want to be in the situation again where I have to borrow $50 from somebody because it's an emergency. 
Nowadays, I mean, $50 was an emergency 10 years ago for me, but nowadays an emergency is thousands of dollars. So I could not imagine living my life without some sort of a cushion. Saving money is so vital to me now. Let me know in the comments below, what are some tricks that you have to keep from spending all of your money and keeping more money in your savings account? Let me know down in the comments below. Before you leave, again, I would appreciate a thumbs up on this video if you like content like this. Don't forget to subscribe for more content. Check the video description below for useful links. And I will see you guys again with my next video. Bye.